I promise you, you do not want to miss what you're about to hear. This is our third part of a series with Pastor Tony Scott, who, in my opinion, he's not just a friend, but he's one of the greatest revelators of understanding the kingdom of God and the principles that should operate in your life to make your life successful now and in eternity. And that's just, that's just abbreviating it. He's going to be dealing with the secret kingdom without any further delay. I'm telling you, this, this is going to change your life if you listen to all of it. Pick up where you want to go at that point. Let's go. Perry, I want to take you to Psalm 25 and verse 14. Okay. And in this particular passage of Scripture, the Bible talks about the secret place. Right. And of course, Psalms 91 refers to the secret place. And we get over into the New Testament. The Apostle Paul uses the word secret or mystery, the mysteries of the kingdom, the mm -hmm. secret of the kingdom of God. So what does that all mean? Why is the kingdom secret? Why is it mysterious? Good point. I would okay. have thought about So that. something in the New Testament that was hmm. called a mystery or wow. was called secret, it means something that was not revealed at a given time, but now has been revealed. Been made and, it, and it's been, made, it's been revealed and people can see it and begin to grasp and understand it. So Psalms 25, 14, the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere and worship Him, and He will show them His covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. Wow. I just want you to hear this. Now, I've read that before, but you're going to expound on I'm it, I'm going right? to expand that. Okay. So, so what does He do in the secret place? He said, come into the secret place with me. Go deep with me. Now, here's the problem for Christianity. We're so shallow. Everything is so shallow. It reduces it to bite-sized things. There was this movement across this country, a church growth movement called the Seeker Movement, the Seeker Sensitive Movement. Let's boil it all down to, to three sentences on an outline. Let's, let's just give people bite-sized pieces of the gospel. You, you don't reduce the gospel down. You put the gospel out there and let it do its work. Mm. When, when you dilute the gospel, you take the power out of the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel is supposed to hit you in the face between the eyes. It's supposed to pierce right to the dividing asunder of your spirit and your soul. It's supposed to be a knife that cuts, but a knife that heals. Mm. And I want you to hear that. So, so what does this mean? You come into the deep place with me. This word secret here in 2514 Psalms is a very interesting word. Listen to this. It actually means couch. When I first saw that, I, a Hebrew I said, word. Yeah, a Hebrew word. <laughs> and I said, you got to be kidding me. Couch? Why does it mean couch? Because here's what God is saying. In your home, when you're going to have intimate conversations with friends, family, you sit on the couch. Everybody mm. just kind of piles up on the couch. Right. And, and you have this personal time, this intimate time. Or you sit with your wife and watch uh, TV, maybe watch a nice uh -huh. movie of some kind, and you're holding hands and, and kissing. We won't go any further than that, but you're having a really wonderful time together. A time w where you just... Have you been watching me and Pam? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just had to say yeah, that. I learned from you. I just had to yeah. say that. <laughs> but, but what is happening there? Uh -huh. it, it, you kind of open up. You, you kind of let your guard down. You become who you really are. Uh -huh. Oh, God, help us. Because you see, the kingdom is about God bringing you the secret of your identity mm, to wow, show okay. you who you are. Say, Good. He, he says to you, listen, I made you human. I gave you mind, will, and emotions. Mm -hmm. I put all right. that in a body. But you're really a spirit being. And I want to show you who you are. I want to show you wow. your real identity. All I right. want to show you the power of your kingdom identity. So, what is covenant? Covenant is the way God operates. Covenant is the foundation of the kingdom. So when we come into the New Testament, what did He do? He showed us the covenant by giving us a constitution. And the constitution of the kingdom, the red letter teachings of Jesus. Oh, say that again. Okay, so listen to this. Say that again. So covenant is found in a constitution. All, of, all covenants have a constitution. Oh, absolutely. But the Bible it, does too. Yes. It is. It is. And, and what is the... So the covenant of the kingdom is revealed through the constitution, which are the red letter teachings of Jesus so Christ. So if you have a Bible that's printed with the black ink and the red ink, the red, the red letter is the sayings of Christ. You ought to know everything written in Whoa. the red because that's about you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, you Christ. know what? You did a serious what was I it called? Did Paint the, red, the Town I Red? I spent one year, Paint the Town Red, 52 weeks. There are 52 direct commands of Jesus Christ in the New Testament for how we ought to live this our life. I love this guy. Who else would come up with this? And it's there in the Word. It's there in the Word of God. Wow. 52 direct commands. Whoa. I took one command a week for 52 weeks and did nothing but 
teach from the red letter teachings so of Jesus. So in that That song, is the secret kingdom. So to get the covenant revelation that you need for your personal life, that word is... You've got to go deep. But it's couch, which is to get close to someone. Intimacy. Intimate with someone. Yes. And that is the secret place. Secret place is not a actual physical place. No. It is it's a, a position a you are in with God yes. in your alone time with Him. Yes. Just like the deep. Were, Pam and I, when we were dating, we, we wanted to be together. We still want to be together. We want yeah. to go. I said, baby, let's take a date day because you love that person. You want to be around them. And this is what bothers me, I think, about Christians who are always skipping church or thinking, well, you know, we're going to go be away a couple of weeks, but then never go to the house of God. You're not not only not being intimate with the Lord, but you are showing him that you have no interest in him to be away out of church for months. Now, I know COVID has changed things. But to, to willfully be away from the house of God with God's people where they are gathered together, assembling together to worship and understand the word of God and you have no desire. What does that say about you when you have no desire for that? You got, let's say you got church members. None of them, none of them come to church. They can't come. They will. They just, they just come when they want. What, uh, is uh, it, okay, what does so, it say about this person? So what if in your marriage you never had times of intimacy where it was just the two of you behind closed doors and you experienced marital intimacy, which is biblical. Song of Solomon, go read it mm -hmm. for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, let me use the word. Song of Solomon is an erotic teaching of an, a relationship between a man and his wife. And he says, this is the depth of intimacy I want you to have with Jesus Christ. Paul writes second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, right. and he talks about this. Husband All right, wife. Now, I want right. you to see this because this is important. So when you, um, here's what I think we have. We've raised up a, a, a church in, in, a, in our country. It's the weakest church that we've ever had in this nation. That's so true. We've raised up a church by giving them appetizers, and we never get to the main meal. Mm. We never get never to gets the depth to of the Spirit. We never, never. get to the intimacy of yes. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You can't have intimacy until you're totally focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's just you and Jesus Christ, and you're having intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And and there is where he reveals the depth of his kingdom and he shows you his covenant. He teaches you his covenant. He said, this is how I want you to live. This is your life. This is the way you will overcome the world. Your body will be more healthy. Your mind will be more healthy. Your spirit will be more healthy. When you choose to live by my red letter teachings and when you choose to live in covenant with me, then this infusion of life will cause you to overwhelm your circumstances. And here's what I'm hearing in that, that you going back to the natural than the spiritual, if a husband and wife has no physical intimacy, they never birth anything. Yes. So without the secret place in God, without that intimate time with Him, you will never birth anything. You'll not birth the answer to prayer. No. You'll not birth financial blessing. No. You'll not birth the, the, the rebirthing of your children coming to know the Lord. You will live just, honestly, you're going to live a very bland life without any fruit at all. And Jesus made it very clear that you have to produce fruit. You have to have spiritual results. You have to see things happening. If you're connected into the vine and connected with Him, you're going to produce fruit. And I, I hope I can remember this, but many years ago I was talking about that what if a husband and wife is always, well, we're just a fellowship right now. We're just a fellowship. Well, well, church people fellowship all the time. But if you fellowship... The Edomites. With a, <laughs> yeah, the joke. If you fellowship without relationship... Then you don't, ha yeah, you don't have, and I think this is why people are bored with church. I think this is why they want to go to a church that gets them out in an hour because they have never encountered. You've had people come to, I'm just going to say it. He's had people in Ohio, and if you, if you live in Northern Ohio, this is the church you need to go to. Let me just tell you. It's Pastor Tony Scott's church. And I want to say it right, Mommy. The church in Maumee. Ma the church in Maumee. And there Maumee. is Maumee. Maumee. And there is a place, I get it mixed up. I advertise to Maumee. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, Perry, that's not how you say it. It's, it's an Indian and word. It's a great, Maumee. Yeah, it's a great church. But he's had people come to his church who are now members, who now are part of that body, who've said to him, we went to a place, to, church, to a congregation that we didn't know what the anointing was. We never felt the presence of the Spirit of God. Sure. It was like a club, just yes. a social club where you get, it's like going out to eat or something. 
And it stunned them when they could come into an atmosphere. Man, I feel the anointing talked about this and feel the presence of God. Because when you begin to feel the presence of God, that's that intimacy. When you met the woman that you married or yes. the man that you married, a feeling became you. That, that's how you knew you were in love. Feelings begin to emerge. You begin, you feel it in your heart, you feel it in your soul, you feel it deep on the inside. You want to be around them. And folks, we've got to get to the point where it's not about going to church, but it's about going and getting into the presence of the Lord. And I'm well, going to the secret place, the secret place. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And I hope it doesn't make anyone upset that I've ever preached No, let's for. upset some because, people. Let's get well, some people upset here. Listen to me. For God's sake, let's upset some people. I'm upset about this because I think that we have this message of the kingdom of God that will transform your life and it will transform the world. Yeah. It will transform our government. It will save this nation. And the problem we have is ministers mm. of the gospel, well, I'm just afraid that things will get out of control. The kingdom is always out of control as yeah, far as yeah, man is concerned, but it's in control as far yeah, as God's concerned. Yeah. Let, let me give you a, a couple of things here. Mm -hmm. There is something inside of us that's always yearning for something more. Mm -hmm. There's always a part of us that's missing. You, you, you know, you do all right. this stuff. Um, the guy who just won the Super Bowl, he's a quarterback. Right. Okay, I'm not going to call his name, but right. everybody knows who he is. You know what he said after that win? And, and he's won all these like four or five oh, Super yeah. Bowls. He said, there's an emptiness. <gasps> you know? I didn't know he said oh, that. Oh, yeah, he said really? that. There's even like, after you, even after all he's those got games. all these accolades and he's done all this stuff, he's one of the greatest quarterbacks, probably the greatest quarterback they've ever Could seen. Could be, yeah. All right. He said, "There's just something missing." That's what is going on wow. inside of us when we do not know God in an intimate way. When we do not know the power of intimacy. So let me give you some things. When you come into the kingdom of God, you will realize you are unique. You will realize mm. you are important. When you realize you are unique and you're important, you will realize life has meaning and you will realize life is worth living. This is what the kingdom transformation will do for you. Good. Without spiritual understanding, you cannot grasp the why of your life. If you don't come into covenant with God, you can never know your spiritual identity. You can never know your eternal identity. God is going to give a white stone to people. It says in the book of Revelation, yeah. when we get there to be with him on the white stone, there is a new name written that nobody knows. What is that name? That's your real identity. But he <laughs> wants to reveal it to you while you're here on the earth. He wants to show you who you are so you can have wow. the joy of God in your living. I wonder what mine is. I found out Perry, P-E-R-R-Y in Hebrew is P-E-R-I. You know what it means? No. It's in Isaiah, fruitful. So I never... And I don't mean this negative. I was named and, after and, my dad. And you've lived a fruitful life. Yeah, exactly. And so my name, what my, my, yes. my daddy named me, which was his name, meant fruitful in the yes. Hebrew language. And so God has allowed me to produce much fruit. And I thought that was very, I thought that was very interesting. So God left, God left something inside of us of him that would grow. So let's go back to the mm. garden again. I live All in the right. book of Genesis right. because if you understand the first two chapters of Genesis, you will understand life. I'm just going to tell you right now, you ought to live in the first two chapters. Wow. So, so back in the first two chapters, what did he do? He created man, scraped up the dirt of the ground, made a mud man, leaned over to heaven, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Spirit and soul came into the man at that particular moment, a unique spirit from God. So a piece of God a, or a piece of eternity came into man mm. in the very beginning, into the first Adam and the first man. And it went throughout the whole generation of mankind. Mm. There is a piece of God on the inside of you. So God designed us so that we cannot ever be fulfilled unless we are, ha are having an intimate relationship with him. We cannot be fulfilled. I just want you to get that. Then the word eternity, it refers to a deep abiding awareness of something that's outside the boundaries of our five senses. This is why I call it the secret kingdom. It, it, it's the mystery. There's something in the kingdom that connects with your spirit, that brings you into wholeness. You feel whole, you feel full, you feel well, you feel bold. So we are created by God as spirit beings, put here on earth to have a human experience. Listen to this, Galatians 4, 19. Paul says, you are my dear children, but I agonize in spiritual labor pains once again until the anointed one will mm. be fully 
formed in your hearts. Mm -hmm. God put us here to have a piece of Himself that wow. He, by the revelation of His Son, Jesus Praise Christ, God. would wow. begin to reveal who we are. And as we grow in Jesus Christ, we develop the spirit of eternity. Mm. So when, when, when we talk about eternal life, we're always putting that off until the day we die. Yes. Okay, but really, eternal life, once you're in the kingdom, is in you at that moment. We are eternal. No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't right mean now. it doesn't mean you're not going to physically die. No. We all it's appointed to be one step, but that's yes. physical death. Yes. So right now I am an eternal being. Yes. I'm yes. not going to be when my spirit comes out of my body. When you I were, have listen, life now. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, Psalms 139, God mm. knew you and wrote a book about your life. Let me give you the Hebrew. Mm. It said, before the sperm ever met the egg and you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you and wrote a book about your life. If you want to... Uh, everybody you, listen to this now. This is like mind boggling to yes, me. It's it one of is. my favorite yes, verses is. in the Bible. Before the sperm met the egg and you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you and wrote a book about your life. Now, my, my thing is, I said to God when I got hold of that, where's the book? I want to see the book. And he said to me, it's right here. <laughs> you want to know who you are? Then you live in this yes, book. Sir. And I'll show you who you are. I'll bring you into your eternal being while you're here on the earth. Because you see, eternal living is just as important as eternal life. I'm to live eternally while I'm here. And then I'll get eternal life when I cross wow. over. Wow. One of the things I think, because people... Uh, ministers, young ministers especially, would come to us from time to time and they would say, what is, and, and this is just normal, what's the secret to the success? What's the secret to this? And you remember me when I was in a van sure. and I didn't had nothing. I wasn't even married to Pam. And I think uh, I was preaching for you when I was dating Pam. And you were. Stayed on the phone all night. My phone yeah. bill was horrible. Yep. You remember those days. I do. You remember, I stayed in this house back then. So. When I look back on the ministry and I, I, I would say, I have someone come to me and they would say, why has God done all of this? It is this reason. And you've known me from the beginning. I have been kingdom minded and not denominationally minded. Yes. I respect the denomination I grew up with. They gave me the opportunity years ago in ministry. I love these older ministers. I love these men of God that are retired. I love talking to them. And like our friend Floyd Lahan. Yes. Floyd recommended me to come to your church. Yes, he did. When he was the evangelist director of Virginia. So these are men I love and admire greatly. However, from the very beginning, they used to say, boy, Perry's different. And I've heard him say, Perry's not a system man. Because in our particular denomination, there was a thing like get called, go to school, become a pastor, become an overseer, and then, then come. And join a political camp. <laughs> join a camp and end up in Cleveland. Well, I ended up in Cleveland, but not in that manner, you know. And I would say this to you, that it was being kingdom minded. I started preaching in Church of God, Assemblies of God, Pentecostal Holiness, Independent Churches, Charismatic Churches, Baptist Churches. And I just was wanting to build the kingdom. I, I hooked up people that were Baptists with Pentecostals. I hooked up Charismatics with classical Pentecostals. That's what the kingdom is. The kingdom is everybody who has covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ, working together for the purpose of producing fruit in that kingdom, which are the eternal souls that need to come into that kingdom that are born again and build up the kingdom of God. Let me tell you two things. Mm -hmm. People are drawn to kingdom people. I have people that are drawn to me. 16 year old girl attending a seeker type church in our city for many years with her family came and visit our church because my granddaughter Mackenzie invited her. She came visit the youth group and she came back on Sunday and finally she said to Mackenzie, I'm, this is going to be my church. And Mackenzie said, well, why did you make that decision? She said, at my church, it's all about me. But at this church, it's all about Jesus. Oh, that's so good. This girl's 16 Ooh, years that's old. So good. And she said, I want to learn about Jesus. Ooh, if wow. you go back to just the few first hundred years after Jesus ascended to heaven, you will find a concept being taught that we've lost. It was called spiritual formation spiritual formation. Hmm. It was formulating our lives, transforming our lives so that we would transcend this world and become our eternal beings. And so there is a sense in which it was called intentional discipleship to become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was the method by which wow. we would have a wow. renewable source of spiritual yes, energy yes. coming up out of us on a continuing basis. And people would see us in this world and they would see the power of God and they would see the love of God in wow. us and they'd be drawn to the kingdom. Now, one more yeah, thing and yeah. I'll, I'll stop. I know I'm taking too much time. No, here, no, no. 
if Shirley yeah. were alive right now, and I wish she would, she would see this because she always said to me, one day you're going to be on Perry's program. Oh. And I never told you that. No, you never have. And uh, <laughs> it's all right. I, I wish you could see this. We had a spiritual oneness that, that people don't get. Let, let me tell you about the kingdom. It's, it's, it's spiritual oneness with Jesus. Uh, that's why we wrote the book. Shirley and I wrote it together. One plus one equals one. And I want you to get a copy of the book. Perry's been talking about the book. You must get a copy. Go to my website. Uh, it'll be on yes. the screen there. But we were one because we understood how God was one. And that oneness of the Spirit was, is what will bring the whole kingdom on earth together. Mm -mm. And I just want to say, I read that book, and you've got to get this. It is something that, and we, we don't want to always use the word life-changing, transforming. But when you understand what he's been teaching the past three weeks, you hear me. Kingdom principles operate in people who believe them and act upon them. It's not a matter of getting information. It's a matter of getting revelation. And the revelation can change your situation. And we're going to do another program uh, next week. What's next week's program? It's a we're going to talk about the upside down life because that's what the kingdom I is in that. this world. I love it's, that, it's I love that title. So don't miss it now. I have a special offer. I want you to get this. You're going to help keep manifest on the air. Don't forget this. Without your help, we don't stay on the air. And so if you want us to continue on the air, get the offer, and then I'll be back sharing with you some exciting news of things that's coming in the very near future that you can be a part of. Please give me your undivided attention. Many months ago, I began to hear secular economists announce a new global reset was coming. That's when I heard this phrase in my spirit, the American apocalyptic reset. For several weeks, I woke up early and began receiving a series of stunning prophetic downloads that I penned and now have placed them all in my brand new prophetic book, America's Apocalyptic Reset. This book is a must read for all Christians, for all of those who love Bible prophecy, for conservative Americans and American patriots. The 19 chapters go extremely deep into exposing the agenda now being secretly plotted and to be publicly forced upon us, the American people, and how we can counter it. I discovered some very stunning ancient prophetic parallels and patterns, some that go back 4,000 years that are repeating themselves in the United States right now. I deal with America's Great Babel Reset and the planned persecution of Christians, America's self-curse that will eventually bring judgment upon the nation, the coming Jezebel clash, the woman who will be president, how should we act and wisely resist corrupt governments. I reveal the unique Silicon Valley parallels and also go into the plans to bankrupt, then reset America economically. Also, I talk about how to function when the church must go underground. I received a very unique revelation concerning President Trump and a pattern that's found in history. There's a chapter also that I deal with how did the prophets get it wrong and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the most significant prophetic book in the history of my ministry, especially in the time that we're in, but that's not all. I'm also including my most recent inside information prophetic briefing on two audio CDs. It's two hours in length, and I will release detailed information that I cannot, and I want you to hear me, I cannot, nor will I, share this on social media or on television, as absolutely in the climate that we're now in, a lot of this information would be targeted for being blocked and banned if it was made public and not done in this private setting that we're doing it in. These two hours contain biblical, political, national, and international revelation and information that I am sure that many of you have not been aware of. It is for truth lovers only. I want you to order right now this prophetic resource package, my brand new book, The Apocalyptic Reset, and the two-hour prophetic CDs by going online at perrystone.org or calling 1-888-21-BREAD or write me at Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now, we're making this available for your donation of $35 or more, and you can request the offer APR-140. That's APR-140. I'm going to unmask the radical globalists and individuals who have set out to oppose and silence Christians, silence patriots, and shut the mouth of conservatives. And we will show you in the book what we can do when we unite together. We are looking forward to getting this into your hands. Well, hope you enjoyed the program. I want you to keep watching this series. Chapter 13 in this book, 
uh, is one that I could never share publicly on TV or whatever, because not only could my friend get in trouble, but I could have some difficulties and challenges with that. But there's a lot in this book that really we're hearing back from people saying that they learn so much and the historic parallels, the prophetic parallels that are there as well are absolutely incredible. So get the book and don't forget to get the, the uh, audio CD that's with it. You know, when you hear it, you're going to understand why I said it has to be played in your home. I mean, we're coming in, we have a neighbor, a neighboring country that there is just severe persecution breaking out against Christians and it's beginning to happen. You know, it's been happening in the United States for quite some time with Christian, Christian business people who have certain moral principles. And when you, when they say they have those, they're getting attacked and sued and everything else. And we're in a very critical time because listen to me, folks, there is a man called the Antichrist who is in the wings, who's going to come on the scene and hell is going to come to earth when that happens. Now we're not, you know, people call me a doom and gloom preacher. Look, I've read the end of the book. It turns out great for those of us who believe the Lord. Those of us who believe the Lord, we're not worried about everything that's about to happen because we've already been given the preview of it right here in scripture. But I want you to be aware of the fact that you better be serving Jesus Christ. You better be uh, with his people, find a, a place of worship and learn to follow him and serve him because it's going to get extremely interesting probably in 20, uh, into 2021, 2022. Uh, we've not seen it yet like it's going to be. Anyway, whoo, get me off of that because it's, it's too heavy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Christ Temple Church, August 27th through 29th in Huntington, West Virginia, Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. On September the 12th, Woodward First Assembly of God in Woodward, Oklahoma, Pastor Brad Smith. That's a Sunday. Uh, September 14th, you guys in Kentucky, and you always pack that church out every time I've come to Independence, Kentucky. So do it again and come and be with me September 14th, Tuesday night. Pastor Tommy Bates at uh, Community Family Church in, there in Independence, Kentucky. T September 29th, which I believe is a Wednesday, Harvest December. Check your calendar, make sure that's a Wednesday, September 29th. That is going to be in Oak Grove. Of Arkansas. Now, I don't get down in that area. This is the first time in, that I've been in that area in quite some time, so please come and be with me. And then, of course, Faith, Faith Landmark Ministries on October the 10th. Now, uh, we're going to, out of time, don't forget our main event that's coming up. We hope to see many of you there. We'll see you next week on Manifest. This is Perry Stone. Join me and our great team of John Kilpatrick, Jensen Franklin, Tommy Bates, Karen Peck in New River, Lyndall Cooley heading up our praise and worship for our great Holy Spirit-filled anointed fall camp meeting. October the 5th, that's a Tuesday night, through the 9th, which is Saturday morning. Come to OCI in Cleveland, Tennessee, and join me and the entire team for the greatest event all year long. Don't forget about Pam's Fall Festival on Saturday afternoon. See you there.